British Airlines Euroleague. I feel devotion. In this episode, the defending champions hosted an historical powerhouse in the game of the week. Nick Canamedley and Andy Panko are coming back for good with their teams. While Seska Moscow's Aaron Jackson talks to us about his passion besides basketball. And stay with us all the way to enjoy the B-Win MVP and the top three plays of the week. Olympiakos Piraeus built a championship team last year as they gradually improved with some overlooked players led by a world-renowned leader named Vasilis Panoulis. They are trying to accomplish the first repeat in Euroleague basketball since Maccabi Tel Aviv in 2004-05. One of the most important pieces of the puzzle is the American forward Kyle Hines, who became almost irreplaceable because of his unique skills, despite being very undersized in the paint. He's like a monolith, and it's very difficult to compete with him on rebounds, for example. Offensive rebound is really just all about desire, um, heart, and hustle. Um, I mean, I don't think there's really any tricks. I just try to get uh, get to the proper and right position, the Piper, Piper position, um, a lot of times when I know the uh, shots are going up. Kyle is also an amazing blocker. He could arguably be the best pound for pound in the competition. And not only does he reject shots, he does it in key moments of the game and gives his team more possessions instead of sending the ball into the crowd. It's just about be, being able to develop a, a timing uh, against the opponent. Maybe it's just like a natural talent, I kind of think. Um, but I just try to uh, I try to find ways to not only try to block the shot, but also try to disrupt the uh, the, the opposing players' uh, concentration, so that way they're not necessarily foc on the, focusing um, on the basket and not necessarily getting the easy layup or easy shots. They have to also worry about me coming um, from the weak side. It requires a lot of dedication and even the ability to study and learn quickly to become such a specialist at this level in a team where everybody knows exactly what to do and what to give. I think video uh, helps you learn the tendencies of the player, um, helps you learn your strengths and your weaknesses. And then also I think when you get out on the court, um, the experience of playing against somebody helps even more because um, you get to see it from your, from your own two eyes. You get to see exactly um, what the player does and, uh, and, and, and how and different ways they are effective. I mean, I think both are very, uh, very useful. Hines contributes to his team with some solid numbers. He's averaging almost 10 points and 5 rebounds per game in less than 20 minutes. And he has become an essential piece of the famous Spanulis pick and roll, which is one of the most important calls in the playbook of the Reds. I try to use uh, my strengths or my speed and my quickness and my strength. Um, to help give him better screens. Um, but a lot of times, like, we'll practice without defense. A lot of times it's like 2-1-0 like or, or even when we're doing just 5-1-0 or even when we're on practice, we practice a lot of times just trying to find different angles and, and different schemes and different routines where he feels comfortable getting the screen and, and puts him in a better position for him, help him uh, make a play or, or uh, make, make where he's, uh, he's easier to get open shots. The game of the week at Piraeus featured a great duel. The reigning champions Olympiacos were meeting FC Barcelona Regal in a much anticipated test. It was the last chance for the Greek team to compete for the leadership of Group F, starting two games behind their guests. It was an even contest in the first part. Then Barcelona took over with a 17-4 run in the middle of the second quarter to finally reach half-time with a 10-point lead. The Greek side came back in the third quarter. Vasilis Spanoulis led them, scoring 10 points in that period, and it was a one-point game after 30 minutes. However, Barcelona was just too strong that night. Razem Lorbeck scored 11 points in the last quarter, where his team dominated, reaching a maximum lead of 16 points at one stage. The Slovenian big man was the player of the game in a 90-77 victory for Barca. 
it's a great feeling to uh, to get the win here. It's uh, one of the most difficult courts, and uh, where especially they beat us last year on the final four, and we wanted to see uh, how good we can compete. And I think today we did a very good job. And if if it's so that we are qualified, we are very proud to be quali to qualified already. Erasim scored 21 points with an almost perfect 9 for 10 in field goals, scoring a performance index rating of 20 in 28 minutes. In Tel Aviv, Nick Kanamedli is discovering what Euroleague basketball is all about. The American forward is trying to find his role in the team after being a key player with Estudiantes Madrid and Valencia, where he was selected in the Euro Cup first team in 2011-12. The 29-year-old did not come to Euroleague early in his career, but there was a perfectly good reason for this. Well, I'm very excited to be here. I mean, for me in my career, it's kind of been waiting for the right situation. I've had some opportunities to be in Euroleague in the past, but I felt like uh, the team that I was on and the, uh, has been kind of better suited for me earlier in my career and, and uh, you know I've been on some great teams with some, some good teammates and it's been a good experience in Euro Cup also. The team that he joined is a big name club and the kind of pressure that comes with that is often hard to deal with. Although according to Nick, he was more focused on the positives of that situation. I think the tradition is, is something that you have to appreciate and respect and understand that you have a certain level of expectation. Um, you know, and as a player, it gives you motivation. Uh, it drives you every day. Um, you know, there's a winning atmosphere here with the coaches and the players who have been here. Uh, and I think that that's something that just kind of spreads and rubs off. If, if you feel like you're supposed to win every game, it, it brings a mentality and an attitude. With a lot of work still to do to become a solid Euroleague basketball player, Kana Medley is relying on Maccabi's extended family to help him settle in and create a winning atmosphere within the club. I'm really happy with the group of guys we have, um, not only with the talent level, um, but also the personalities. Just good, good group of guys, hard workers, uh, which I think is important for a successful team. We get along really well uh, and work hard every day in practice. We have a great coaching staff. In the game at Fenerbahce Ulka Istanbul, Maccabi Electra was looking for a third victory in a row to continue their playoff stream. Gaia Peker and Bohan Bogdanovic put together an 11-0 run in the first quarter, but that was not sufficient for the Turkish squad. Bogdanovic produced another impressive offensive performance with 26 points, but the Israeli side was just too effective with five men in double digits behind Ricky Hickman's 18 points. Maccabi took the win 94-85 and with a record of 5-5 is now just one game behind the fourth place in Group F. He may be the first Spaniard this century to coach a Euroleague team in another country, but what makes Johan Plaza of Jalgiris Kornas really unique are his jobs outside basketball, like when he supported himself as a prison guard while he tried to break into coaching. Constantly I, I remember from where I came and I know that uh, inside the jail uh, you're working with uh, a lot of kind of people, not uh, people who are who are there for because he killed somebody, people who are just take the money of another person for drug for many reasons. Uh, and But what you learn is first to, to give second chances to the people. Plaza's first coaching chance came in the youth ranks of former Euroleague winner Joventut Barcelona, where he'd helped develop future world champions like Rudy Fernandez, eventually becoming an assistant on the men's team. Never can can imagine that the life gonna give me these chances. But also it's true that I I will I always want what I deserve. And what I mean is that I work in really tough from 1977, and then these chances uh, arrived too late, but arrived. At 42, after moving to Real Madrid, Plaza soon got the chance to lead Europe's most successful club ever. 
the ace that opportunity by winning both the 2006 Euro Cup and Spanish League titles in his very first season as a head coach. That success story could not have been written better, not even by Plaza himself, who by then had another new profession as the author of his first published novel. Then I begin with some friends to write some, some little uh, sentence after it's beginning to be a little chapter and finally it's a, a little book. One little book became several of them, even as his coaching career thrived, because Plaza still escapes from the pressures of basketball by writing fiction. My schedule is really, really stressful, but in the night when I am writing alone in my home, it's like I am not a coach, like I am not working in a jail, uh, like I have no problems. It's, uh, I am working and thinking on my own. If one thing unites his many vocations, it is Plaza's own story of chasing his dreams. Uh, there are many taboos in our lives and I want that everybody are fighting for, for the dreams. That doesn't matter if you want to be musicians, coach or waiter. Uh, fight for your dreams. Johan Plaza and his players met Real Madrid in week 10. They were heading for one of the latest calls in the qualification race. The Lithuanian team started very well, taking a 13-point lead in the first quarter. Real are not the Group E leaders by chance. Jalgiris were able to keep control for more than two quarters, as they were still leading in double digits in the first minutes of the third. Then Madrid scored five three-pointers to enter the final period with a five-point lead. 40 minutes were not enough to decide the winner, and free throws from Madrid took it into overtime before winning 105-104, thanks to an unbelievable Nikola Mirotic. Our aim is to finish in the top two and have home court advantage. We have difficult games to play. We have Panathinaikos and we have to go to Seska. These are tough games and we need to prepare for them well. I don't want to think about the final four at the moment. I'm just concentrating on one game at a time because we want to finish first or second in the group. Real Madrid's forward set a new Turkish Airlines Euroleague basketball free-throw shooting record, scoring all his 18 attempts. He finished the game setting three career highs, 31 points and 11 rebounds, and a performance index rating of 37. That's how he earned the BWIN MVP of the Week honour. Group E action started on Wednesday. Among all the players involved, Seska Moscow's guard Aaron Jackson caught our curiosity. He's a second-year EuroLeague basketball player after his first experience with Bilbao last season. And he's proving that he's a reliable role player for Ettore Messina's team, which was a huge adjustment to make. Being on a team like this does, it really shows a character of a player. You, are you willing to sacrifice to help your team win? So I'll do anything to help us win. But my main focus is just, you know, he just wants me to be the point guard that helps uh, the, the momentum going and speed the game up. But not only that, he emphasizes on me to play defense real, uh, real well to, to cause the point guard on the opposing team to be uncomfortable. In fact, he's playing more than 19 minutes per game, averaging less than five points. Those numbers prove that his main task when on the floor is not only defending, but trying to learn how to drive a deep and talented team forward as a playmaker more than a finisher. He doesn't need to go that far from his gym to get some much-needed advice. I get the opportunity to play against Papa Lucas and uh, Teo um, each day, and um, you know that that right there is just a way to model, um, mold my game right off of them, get to practice against them, and I get to see how they play the point guard role. And um, I get a close hand against that each and every day, so I'm very uh, thankful for that. There are several ways of referring to the point guard role. One of those is calling them floor generals, but we prefer to compare them to conductors or movie directors. That fits very well with Aaron Jackson's passion. My favorite movie is Training Day um, with Denzel Washington. Favorite director is Marco Stasey. Um, but 
And I like Michael Bay too. It's just so many uh, um, good uh, directors like that, but I really find myself with Training Day, Pulp Fiction, and Reservoir Dogs. You know, those movies, uh, those type of thrillers like, I like a lot. Of course, there's a lot of movie theaters in Moscow where he can cultivate his hobby. But Aaron is more of a cinema student than just a simple spectator. I think I've seen every movie ever. I mean, I'm, I'm, well, I'm done playing basketball. Hopefully one day I get into a career which I'm, I'm making a movie or writing a movie because you know my agent, he works with that. So we talked about that a few times. I think I, I thought about it a few times, just like a, a old high school love thing, you know, um, two got a girl and a uh, guy, and they're, they're in love, and unfortunately uh, the guy has to leave and go to college, and then he has to get drafted, play NFL, and you know, and all I can say to end that they don't get back together. It's not going to be a typical uh, love story, and, uh, and I'm gonna I'll probably end it uh, with a real twist, which no one will like, which I which I like endings like that. Jackson and his team showed up in Bamberg in the top 16 week 10. That was the fourth meeting with the German side. Seska had won the previous three, but they weren't easy games. This time the Russian team dominated. They took a double digit lead in the first half and finished the job conceding only 23 points to their hosts in the last two quarters. Vlado Mitsov scored the first of a couple of three pointers that sealed the deal for Seska. He finished the game as leading scorer with 17 points, along with Nenad Kurstic. Seska took the win 78-58 and is still third, one game behind Anadolu Efes Istanbul. Andy Panko from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, USA is 35, but he has the spirit and the enthusiasm of a rookie. In fact, this is his first Turkish Airlines EuroLeague season, and he is probably one of the most experienced rookies in EuroLeague history. And he loves Spain. After he spent almost his entire European career there with Girona, Sevilla, Bilbao, and Gipuzkoa, then last summer something special happened. I always wanted to play in Spain, even in the summer. You know, I told my agent my number one priority was to play in Spain. But when Panathinaikos came, I mean, look, I'd be stupid to pass that up. You know, it was a great opportunity for me to play for one of the best teams in the history of basketball. So, uh, okay, it didn't work out there in Greece. It was a good experience. Now I'm back here in Spain, where I wanted to be in the first place in the summer. And I hope to continue here next year, too. Andy played more than 24 minutes per game with both Panathinaikos Athens and Unicaja Malaga, more or less averaging the same stats in Greece and now in Spain. Almost eight points per game, adding more than four rebounds. Not so easy in such a short time. Being a new player here, you know, with a new coach and everything, you kind of just try to have to adapt to what the coach wants for you to do. You know, it's every team is different. You know, I had a different role in Panathinaikos, so I have a different role here. You know, it's all about adapting to what the coach asks for you. Perhaps one of the reasons why he plays in the EuroLeague now, after such a long career, is because he was able to adapt his game to a new position. I've been playing, you know, European basketball for 12 years, you know, and uh, at my position, at the fourth position, it's pretty, it's, it's, you know, it's, I'm a different kind of four man, you know, I, I open the floor, um, I mean, look, my whole career, I was really playing the three, uh, the three, small forward, my whole career, just last year, I converted to a four man. In so many seasons in Europe, and he earned the esteem of both teammates and opponents through his attitude on the floor rather than because of his natural talent. I think people look at me and think uh, kind of amazing to have this guy at 35 years old can play hard at this level. But hey, if you take care of your body, I think if you're a good person, if you eat correctly and just take care of yourself, I think you can play for many more years. I still can play at, the, at, a, at a top level and I go out there and try to play 100%, you know, whether on defense or on offense. Unikaha were not in a favorable position in Group E. They were lying fifth with two less wins than Panathinaikos and Seska before week 10. But that was no reason to give up. Every game is difficult. We have to take one game at a time because I think we've shown that we can be anybody. But then again, you can lose to anybody whether you're home or away. It's not easy, but uh, nothing in life is, so. A fighter on the floor, but a simple family man when he gets back home. My wife is here and I have two kids. After practice, I go home, play with my kids, talk to my wife. Uh, 
I'm boring, man. Sorry. What was not boring at all was Friday night's game between Unikaha and Panathinaikos. Guests led the scoring, arriving up by 10 with Rocco Ukic. After three quarters, the Greeks still led 53-44, with a layup from Sophocles Skotsanitis, assisted by Dimitris Diamantidis. Then suddenly, Marcus Williams decided to change everything. Right after the unbelievable block of Luka Zonic, he finished off the last three triples in a row, scoring in a 9-0 run to overtake Panathinaikos and win 66-60. 15 points of his 22 came in the last quarter to also clinch the head-to-head. -head. There are still hopes for Panko and his team. Let's take a look to the top three plays of the week. Number three, Himki Russia. Final seconds of the first half. Bobby Brown of Montepaschi takes a fadeaway jumper. Off the glass and in at the buzzer. What a fantastic shot. Number two, Kaunas Lithuania. Oliver Lafayette of Jalgiris to Tremel Darden for the crowd pleasing slam in transition. The number one play of the week, Istanbul, Turkey. Final seconds of the first half. Ricky Hickman races down court and buries a buzzer-beating triple over three Fenerbahce Ulker defenders. Great shot. That's it for now, but before we leave you, let's take a look at the next game of the week. A classic club meets a new kid on the block in a pivotal showdown for playoff position when Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv hosts Hinky Moscow region in the next game of the week. This will be only the fourth time that these two teams square off, but each previous encounter has provided plenty of excitement, making this latest game a rare treat. Game number one came in the 2010-11 regular season and featured a runaway lead, an epic comeback and a last gasp winner in Moscow. Hinky rallied from a double-digit deficit to lead into the final second until Maccabi's David Blue hit the clutch three-pointer that sealed a 76-78 win for the visitors. And if that loss was disappointing for Hinky, then the return class with Maccabi was devastating. This time it was Himki's turn to establish a double-digit advantage and Maccabi's turn to pull off the reversal. The frantic final quarter in Israel saw a host team led by Jeremy Pargo, Guy Panini and Sophocles Skorzanitis claim another single-digit win, 80-76. The two were drawn together in a group for the Russian side's return to the top 16, facing off in week four of the Euroleague's second stage. In a comprehensive victory beyond even the Himki fans' wildest dreams, the home side put on a clinic in Moscow to smash Maccabi 88-67. This one wasn't the back-and-forth game seen two seasons ago. Instead, it was Himki showing that a top-16 home win against Barcelona Regal a fortnight before was no fluke. A big game required a standout performance from a big man, Himki center Paul Davis. Maccabi had 11 shots returned to sender, the worst ever for the club, and a top 16 record for Himki, with Davis racking up five blocks to add to 16 points and nine rebounds. The Himki giant is joined by Maccabi's Sean James as the Euroleague's per minute performance leaders this season, and James leads the top 16 in blocks so far. This week will not just be about the centers, however. Maccabi has the likes of Ricky Hickman, Devin Smith and David Logan all in great form in the top 16, while Himki's Zoran Planinic, Sergei Monja and Vitaly Fridzon can also decide games. And with a playoff spot on the line, expect the passionate fans at Nokia Arena to have an impact as well. 
Get ready for a raucous rematch as Maccabi seeks full revenge and Himki a historic upset in the next Game of the Week. Turkish Airlines Euroleague.